Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is a board I've made to add the TMS-9118, which is a variation of the popular TMS-9918, to the W65C265SXB development board by Western Design Center. I thought maybe this interrupt pin was confusing something, so I just pulled that out. And most importantly, I added another bodge wire. Here's the original bodge wire for the reset that I had forgotten to hook up. So this is now a 470 ohm resistor going from pin, let's see, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, going from pin 36 over to a ground connection. Pin 36 is the video output. So in addition to adding that 470 ohm resistor that seemed to help. I think I'm going to try cutting out this R1, this 10k resistor, going between the base and the meter. I think this is trying to do some sort of bootstrapping to increase the input impedance, or I should say apparent input impedance of the transistor. But John of John's basement said that it just seemed to make his system noisier. So let me see what happens when I cut that out. And I set it up into text mode just to see what garbage is in memory, and it showed up like this. It's a little bit janky, and it's kind of flickery, but the main thing is the colors aren't showing up right. The colors are showing up as these sort of bars instead of the way they should. Notice, however, on this little LCD display, it looks a lot better. Interesting. Let me try different colors. And, ah, here we got orange and blue. And here's some blue and purple. It has these sort of vertical gel bar kind of looking things. And it is kind of flickery. It's not a great signal. Okay, let's try it on the big TV. You can see the little spots I get. This is just right after I plug it in. I haven't hit reset or anything. Ah, and there's my test program. So the little tiny LCD actually interpreted this as a color, but the bigger LCD displays I have seem to be not interpreting that information correctly. So this kind of bar structure reminds me of the way the Apple II did colors using basically a bug in NTSC using artifact colors. Let me change that to say white and black. Okay, now we have some solid black and white. I didn't initialize the memory, so it's whatever's garbage is in memory. It is a bit flickery though on occasion. Unless I stare at it, in which case it stops. Nope, there it flickered. Okay, here's what the clock looks like on pin 40. Here is what the clock looks like on pin 39. Should that be looking sharper or is that okay? Okay, and here's the signal on pin 36, the video output. Now with that 470 ohm pull down resistor. Let me see if I can get that to trigger better. Okay, I think I see a horizontal sync pulse and a color burst signal, but that does seem awfully noisy, doesn't it? And here's what it looks like actually after the buffer, the signal that actually goes to the monitor. And I don't know, I see a sync pulse, I see a color burst, but overall this looks a bit janky to me. Hmm. Now, one thing I'm worried about is that this chip does get very toasty. Obviously not toasty enough that I'm screaming and pulling my finger off, but it's not comfortable. I mean, I'm not doing a G. Gordon Liddy sort of thing, but it does get toasty. I'm not sure. Maybe it's supposed to get toasty. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments below. Now, one thing I haven't played with is the capacitor values here. I've been using 33 picofarad, but I've seen other values used, so I don't know. Should I play with those, or is that a rabbit hole that won't be helpful? Anyway, if anyone has any thoughts on how to clear this up, let me know.